Kia ora te whanau, uh, i o karaiti ko Andrew Doubleday aho. Today we're looking at the Gospel text for Sunday the 30th of June 2024. It's actually quite long, it's Mark chapter 5 verses 31 through to 43. But what it is, is it's a story which bookends another story. Two parts on either side with us, another story which could be quite separate in the middle. And so these two stories are interwoven, but I'm going to deal with them separately. So the first part, this is part A, and it deals with the bookend parts. I've entitled it Keeping the Smoke In. So I'm simply going to start by reading Luke chapter 4 verses 21 through to 24, and then 35 through to 43. The other part, the bit in the middle, I'll deal with separately. So, here we go. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with her. And then, of course, we've got the story of the woman with the issue of blood, which holds Jesus up a bit. While he was still speaking, now in verse 35, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with them, and went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them not to order them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. I had a friend who was a school science teacher, high school science teacher, and he had a little joke. He would talk about electrical appliances and he would say, electrical appliances are fine, they keep going well as long as you can keep the smoke in. If you let the smoke out, you know that's the end of it. The appliance is useless. You've got to keep the smoke in. Now, I thought it was a good joke. Some people take a while before they twig to what he's actually saying. But here we have a story of keeping the smoke in. The in-between encounter between Jesus going to the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and him getting there in time to save the girl, is actually held up. It's delayed by a woman with an issue of blood, which she's had for 12 years. And as a result of the time delay, as a result of the time that Jesus spends with this woman to get a healing for a condition which has made her life miserable for 12 years. As a result of that, the girl dies. Now here's the thing. It's occurred to me that we see death as an event, as a moment in time. And it was clearly how it was seen then as well by the people. If you could just be there on time, if you can stop this moment of tragedy, then everything will be okay. 
because clinically death is clearly prescribed. We can trace it almost to the second when the heart stops beating, when all brain activity ceases, when on checking the eyes there's no dilation with lights that are put in or anything like that. When breath stops, there's a, a number of clinical indi indicators that indicate that this person has died. And so we tend to see death as an event, as something that happens. The smoke suddenly has all gone out and it's gone. It's dead. Quite some years ago, I heard an interview, I think it was on 9 to noon, I'm not sure whether it was Catherine Ryan or her predecessor, with a um, with an intensive care specialist from the United States who had written a book called The Lazarus Effect. And what he describes is that death is maybe clinically it's an event, but it's also a process. That at the point of clinical death, it doesn't mean that everything has died. Because there are a whole lot of cells, all the cells, that are in the process of a slower decay. And if you can keep them cold, if you can keep them sufficiently turned down, the cellular death will take a lot longer. One of the interesting things he suggested was that in the story of the Titanic where 1500 people died, they were not able to be rescued in time. They were in the freezing waters when the Carpathia came and picked up the survivors. What he said was, what um, Pania said was that given the technology we, and the knowledge that we have today, the Carpathia with a little bit of equipment and with a bit of understanding could have plucked those 1500 people out of the water and resuscitated them even though it was a couple of hours before and 90% of them would have recovered and gone on to live normal lives. That's quite stunning, isn't it? And so what he's telling us is that although we see death as an event, it's also a process. And my hunch is that Jesus was very aware of the reality that this is a process. And that even when he goes to Lazarus, who has been dead for four days, and we could imagine there's a huge amount of the cellular kalahake would have been almost complete for Jesus, there is no point in which it's too late. There is no point in which resurrection is impossible. There's no point at which a new beginning cannot happen. I've been faced with this myself. I may have said before that I have just recently entered my 70th year. Three score years and ten. I'm not quite 70 yet, but I've entered the 70th year. I'm 69. And one of the things that's happened to me as a result of that, I've been thinking a lot about death my death. Thinking about it as an imminent event and constantly focused on the reality that the clock is ticking and I may not have that long to go. And that could definitely be the case. But I realized that as I've got into this mindset, it's been robbing me of life. The process of death is already at work in me at an emotional, at a psychological, at a spiritual level. And I'm allowing it to do that. I've looked at where I am and realized that in many ways, although I'm slower, although my memory isn't what it was, 
I also recognize that I have more capacity to make a difference, to offer good today than I have had at any other time in my life. And so the question becomes, so okay Andrew, so what are you going to give your time to? What are you going to give your energy to? Are you going to be focused on the reality that the clock is running down? Because you don't know how long it will take. As I look around, I have friends and colleagues who are into their 80s who are strong and vigorous. I've also seen people through my long pastoral ministry who from 70 to 80 is a dreadful decade. And they're in a state of rapid decline so that they only just crawl into their 80s. So what's it going to be? What's it going to be? I've decided to stop looking towards just that final moment. And I found that as I've prayed about this and offered this to the Lord, I've often found a, a new sense of freedom. That the challenge is to live every day as fully as I'm able. And I believe that's true for each of us. There's that invitation to live according to the grace and strength that we have for each day. And allow the Lord to take care of the rest. I wonder how many of us are dying before our time. Allowing the smoke to slowly seep out whiff by whiff little bit by little bit, without actually looking at it simply as there's going to come a time, sure, in the meantime, I'm here. As I remember that passage concerning David in the book of Acts, when he had served God's purpose in his time, he fell asleep. Let that be the case. While I continue to serve God's purpose, I will just trust him for the moment when finally he says that's it Andrew time to come home my encouragement is for each of us to live as fully as we're able to live as fully as we're gifted to live because it's not over until it's over Amen God bless you.